Okay. So we can square it, and times it by m, and times it by one half, and we got the kinetic energy. In other words, you got the mass, you know the velocity, so you can get the expression for the kinetic energy, right? Right. Okay. We've got to multiply that by our expression for the exit, which is cross-sectional area over exit area. Right? Yeah. And then that's times velocity of the layer. So is that what we want to do? getting rough, but you probably should have used a different expression for V exit. V exit square root 2 G Y. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so instead, Because we established that V exit was this, right? right? Right. So what we had here was just an intermediate brain fart. Well. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm on some of Yeah, yeah, And we're going to get a 2GY here, so this one half can go away. Do we have this expression for the change in its kinetic energy, right? Well, it's not actually So what's the force? Uh, row times A exit times gravity times Y. Yeah, because we have this. Now, well, let's see now. Provided F is parallel to delta X, mm -hmm. then your F delta X, Same F dot delta X is just F times delta X, right? Right. We haven't necessarily established that, but we have F delta X equal to rho delta X A exit GY, so that F equals rho A exit GY. Now, you know what pressure is? Well, you just have plenty of it at the end of last semester. <laughs> okay, well, that's the universal experience of students who either for one reason or another, procrastination, overwork, or just general sorriness, <laughs> don't get everything done. I don't suspect any of you guys of general sorriness. <laughs> Procrastination maybe happens a little bit, but I think it's you know, mainly a difficulty in balancing everything, right? 
Now I digress. That's not the pressure we want to talk about. <laughs> okay? The pressure we want to talk about here. What do you mean by, how do you measure tire pressure? What units? <coughs> In what? Atmosphere. <laughs> and how many atmospheres do you put in your tire? Pound <laughs> square inch. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. usually have to do it in pounds per square inch, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if we want to do it in metric yeah. units, what are we going to use instead of pounds? Pascals. <laughs> how many pascals are there in a pound? I say there's atmospheric uh, pressure, man. Uh, Yes, we are going to use pascals. We're trying to figure out what a pascal is. Okay, so in, instead of pounds, what does pound measure? It's a unit force. of force. 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 What's the unit of force in SI? Newtons. Yeah, newtons. Okay, and square inch. What's inch a measure of? Length. Length. Okay, what's the unit of length that we use? Meters. meters. So instead of pounds per square inch, we're going to use newtons per square meter. Anybody know what that's called? Lane does. <laughs> he just said it. It's a Pascal. Okay? Now, that's... We'll say a little bit more about the pressure. Oh, what did you say? Yeah, spheres, yeah. Fist force per unit air. You here for the applied calculus? I am. Oh, come on in, have a seat somewhere. We'll get started in about five minutes. I guess this means we're almost out of class time, doesn't it? I think so. I don't know what time we're supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, I, I was thinking. I was thinking. We were on 55 minutes, 50 minutes of class, five minutes of break. Okay, so that's not surprising. Um, oh, buoy. I'm to stop that every once in a while. It gets to 15 minutes, then I have to split the video to post it. Okay. Anyhow, there we are. Okay, now this is really <coughs> kind of fundamental. And this applies to any fluid. Okay? Um, and so you, you'll read your textbook and you'll see how it applies. Um, okay. Now, I want to get a handle on how much force is required to push this water out. Okay? So, Let's look at it this way. Oh yeah, the other thing that maybe I should have mentioned is, of course, the water doesn't come out in a straight cylinder, does it? No. Well, the cylinder actually gets curved. But if you straightened it out, it would still be what we have here, right? Right. Your altitude of the cylinder is then essentially just the arc length of the path. Okay? We're going to assume a short enough time interval that you have negligible curvature. So we can just talk about a cylinder that exits. So let's say that we've got this cylinder of water that just exited. Call the length delta s, delta x. I'm sorry, I almost wrote s. So. Uh, so here's our exiting cylinder, small length delta x. A 
assume that the force that pushes this out is uniform. Okay? So what's the force? 